How are you? Good, mate. What's going on? What's Don? going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, man? Hey, gang. What's happening? Um, well, I'm just getting over the weekend. It was just such a big weekend. How, yeah, how, how was, yeah, it was a bender for the first. Uh, Saturday was the kangaroo reunion. Yeah. Um, and then Saturday, yeah, Saturday night went on a cruise, a rock cruise, and had a few drinks there. And then uh, Sunday, I was pretty quiet actually. Saturday was the big day, but I just uh, I was Where, gone for a couple of days. Who was at the kangaroo reunion? Uh, a lot of people, mate. We yeah, well, it was a good, really good turn up actually. Actually, there was Robbie Kearns, a lot of your era there. Yeah, he's Robbie a lot Kearns. older than me, but yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's uh, always saying good day, say good day to yourself. Yeah, I was, um, I was texting him about going, but then I didn't. Anyway, yeah, who else? Hind Marsh, oh, everybody, you name it, they were there. Is he looking trim, Hindy? Uh, yeah, he looks all right. He looks uh, looks a little bit beefy, but no, he's... Uh... Oh, got that. <laughs> beefy. Are you saying he's fat? No, he's not fat. No, well, he's you've just... said it. Well, he's, yeah, he's fat and sloppy. No, no, he's not. <laughs> no, he looks pretty good. He looks pretty good. Always looks... A, In his of... photos, he looks lean. He might be hitting them with the old after app where you make, you can... The girls, the Instagram models do it. They make themselves look real lean. Spud Carroll was there. Um, yeah, there, there was a lot, of, a lot of the current players or the players that have retired. Uh, Jonathan Thurston was there. Um, Paul Waiatira. Yeah, you? Paul Fatawira, yeah. Fatawira, yeah, sorry. It, um, yeah, Penrith player. Yep. He was he was there. Um, it was a good roll up, and um, yeah, it was uh, it was a great afternoon. Who were some of the old school legends there? Uh, I was sitting with the guys like Gary Jack, uh, Peter Tunks, yeah, uh, the old enforcer from the Bulldogs. Um, yeah, good gang, eh? Yeah, Roy Simmons was on the other side of me. There. I had a good talk with Royce, good fella. That's good. That's a good day then. So did you get blind drunk and get nude, put your balls in some schooner glasses, what happened? <laughs> no, good? nothing, nothing, no, nothing at all, no. no. Uh, all our, all the, all the camera phones were kept in the pocket, so nothing would uh, get out. <laughs> yeah. And we ended up at, um, over across the road, uh, a pub. In Oxford uh, Street? Uh, Oxford Street, was I can't remember now, because I got a, I got a lift there from uh, big Donnie McKinnon, played for Norths, and uh, he was on the kangaroo tour with me in 82. And, yeah. Um, he drove me and Mark Graham over yeah. to the over to the pub, and that's where most of the uh, the retirees were. We went upstairs, and uh, all the retired Bo, Bo Scott and um, oh yeah, yeah, you see Bobcat and that Bobcat, he yeah. was there. That's right, Luke Lewis. Now it's all coming back to me. Yeah, um, yeah so they were all up in the room. We stayed there for a couple of drinks, and uh, we had to go anyway. But uh, what just, club? Just... What club did you go to? No club. No clubbing. No clubbing. What did you do? Dirt on someone. Um, I just stayed home and worked. Oh, you, you're just... Yeah, I had to run a webinar, fat loss webinar last night, and I got to right to the end about with 15 minutes to go, and it just the whole screen paused. Oh, stop it! I, hate I know, that. and a hundred people were watching. I was like, ah, doesn't what'd you do? It happens sometimes. I just had to. Oh, the bloke who introduces it, he uh, he jumps on and just talks to them. Then I just answered some questions that they had, and I I sent him a replay of an old one that was the same webinar, but I was yep. just doing it live last night, sitting in the old replay, so they could okay. watch the last 20 minutes. Yeah, so anyway. Nice. Nice story compared to yours, but, um, you know, it's my life. Yes, well. But all uh, of us can go and gallivant around Kangaroo Reunion. Well, I well, could, actually. I could have, actually. You could have. Organise yourself next year so you have a webinar that's a, a, a week later or Yeah, week good before. idea, mate. All yeah. right, thanks. Yeah. Uh, trying it. to live here, mate. Trying to earn a living. And um, so who was drunk at the... Really? You're just looking for a story, aren't you? You're well, just typical journal. Something. something. Nothing. No, this is nobody get, was drunk. This is how you get hits, mate. Like, put shit on someone, <laughs> bag someone, expose someone's, uh, you know, faults All and, right, let's... and fuck-ups, and then pretend yep. that you've never done anything wrong. And All right, people let... say, well, what about what you did? You just don't answer it, and it just goes away. All right, let's make one up. Uh, Bobby Gentry. He uh, played. Peter Tunks and Robbie Kearns <laughs> did what in the cubicle? <laughs> <laughs> what Absolutely. have they done? Oh no, this is going to get out. I hope not. No, I hope well, no one hears this. Well, we walked in together. Actually, the three of us, we walked into the cubicle and we we um, urinated and then walked out. One flush saves water, doesn't it? Really, it does. Absolutely. You've always been very careful with about the environment. I, I, I mind that about you. That's about the only fatherly thing. I've mm. Done. Thanks a lot. We could make up a name. We could make up something, but uh, it just wouldn't be true. Yeah. Uh, well, the football was pretty good, wasn't it? The football was fantastic. How good? How good was that? You know, every, every, 
including myself, everybody was saying that, um, you know, thinking with the head, Storm would win, and uh, the, you know, think with the heart that hope the Roosters would get up. And I was Roosters all the way, mate. All yeah, way. that was that was just fan- it was inspirational performance from the Roosters. They were they were fantastic. Didn't they just they? It's like the rain. Their rainbows were fly, flying out of their assholes that day. Every <laughs> single thing worked good, didn't it? They well, they they weren't the best defensive team in the in the league for for no reason. They were, they were yeah, fantastic, yeah. but they just it was like a. Yeah, it was like an assault, wasn't it? It was like yep, saving come, they Private come out Ryan, of blocks. the first yep. 20 minutes of saving Private Ryan. They just hammered him. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, they just came much. at him and they couldn't. They didn't have any answers and they started looking frustrated. Um, yep. And there was just pressure on on Melbourne from the word go. It was yeah. bloody. Wasn't I was it? like, yeah. shit, it couldn't go any better. And then the score just kept going up and up and up. And then, oh, yeah, they oh, did, didn't look like losing, did they? No, I was waiting for the storm to sort of come back Um Sort of late in the first half, and then maybe up in the second half early. But they they looked all right in the second half. The first ten minutes or so it looked like they if they score they they could roll on with it. But um, how good was Kiri? Mate, he was fantastic. He, mate, everyone's he, going on about Cronk like coaching, like yeah. on the field being injured. Which yeah, he did a great job, obviously. But yeah. Kiri was the bloke who took the brunt of that game by the balls. Well, he did. Cron- I mean, Cronk orchestrated the, the Roosters. But yeah, he was Keary- like the conductor, but Keary yeah. was the engine room, wasn't he, behind Yeah, him. Keary and Jake Friend spearheaded the, the team by example. Yeah. Mate, they were, they were, for mine, um, Jake Friend, Friend was, was the Clive yeah. Churchill winner. He was- yeah, he, he's up, him and Keary, he, yeah, he, he done a lot of the, oh. even more so than Keary, like underground dirty work, didn't he? He was amazing. He just, uh, he tackled everything and, he, and he's, he's, he's just general... Performance was just, he was in everything. He's a machine, man. What a tough dude. Mate, nice the game, too. Yeah, he's a good fella, is he? Yeah. Yeah, he's just very softly spoken. I've only met him a couple of times. He's always very uh, humble. So you would, you would have had a tear coming into a row because you play for the rest Oh, of mate, I bled for that jersey. And I just, I was just so proud of my team that I've loved <laughs> from day one. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, I've I, always been a rooster. You cut me open and, and you know, well, I've got yeah. red blood, so there's a little bit of it there. Yeah, uh, me too. Me too. So, yeah, I actually I actually played for a a, a team uh, in the juniors called East East Mount Pritchard. Yeah, but they were red and white. Sorry, mate. They're more like oh. Steelers jerseys, weren't they? I had a bruise the old once. Steelers jerseys with the V. I had mate. a bruise once. It was blue when I was wearing yeah, the jersey. Yeah, that's fair. Um, what did I, I played? Who did I play? I played <laughs> for the Roosters, so that that definitely allows me to stay there. So yeah. uh, what else? Um, was well I played there... against East. Uh, what were they called? They used to have the home ground there at Liverpool, Hillier Oval. Uh, Liverpool City. Liverpool, Liverpool City. City. They were the Roosters' colours. Jeez, that's bringing back. I played against Liverpool City too when I was playing junior football. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Minichello played for Liverpool City. He did, and he played for EVU. EVU East, as well. East Valley United. He had some good rivalries growing up, and they got the better of us all the time. He was at the uh, Kangaroo Reunion, and I said good day and had a bit of a talk to yeah, we had a good time yes. away in 2005, Tri-Nations, Minnie and I. Like, he, he, he's funny and fun when you have a drink because he's bouncy. Like, he bounces around a lot. Does he? He's just got good energy. Like, and you just watch him kind of bounce around like a little spider just crawling around everywhere. Have you got um, any... He felt got any... one day we walked down... The, we had to leave this place in London and we walked down the steps and from the top step, he just looked at me and he was talking and he, as he stepped, he hasn't seen and he's just gone slip and he bounced on his back with his hands up, just flying for this wall at 100 miles an hour, hit every stair on the way down, and he just bounced up and just fixed his collar up, and he looked up at me, and we lost it for about an hour. Every time we were speaking about it, we'd fully go into a belly laugh because yeah. it was the most awkward, but also the smoothest, sharpest fall ever. Like He just yeah. bounced back up, and he flicked his collar, and we were ready to go. Oh fucking hell! It was you, funny, did you? Um, and you didn't have any cameras then. You couldn't take any photos. We could have. We could have put a story uh, up there. I think there was. Yeah. Two thousand five. Yeah, camera phones were just kind of new. I think. Yeah, that was that was as big as a handbag. I yeah. Those days. Remember the first the uh, the Nokia cameras? They were shit house when they first came out. The first one. I, I even I thought I thought oh they're gonna get gotta get better than this. Like this is just dodgy pixelated shit. And when you send it, it come through all pixelated because other people didn't have the those phones yet. It was shit. Yeah, yeah. Dog I shit. bought I bought you and Daniel a couple of mobile phones for Christmas. Yeah, that that was when they actually the first day they came <laughs> the out. Brick, the you brick. must have got them that morning from the server. They must have been the five dollar bin. They <laughs> the, were the server. 
Mate, they were massive. And fuck you. I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that we had a phone that was portable everywhere, not not just like yeah. a portable house phone. It just you could go anywhere. And then I remember on the way home, it took you about four hours to set them up for us, but you got to set them up. And then I rang mum, and I couldn't. She she goes hello, and I go hi mum. She goes, oh, she goes Merry Christmas, but I go. She goes oh. You still, you haven't left yet. And I said, Yeah, we're in the car. And she was like, No way. And I was like, yeah, I can't believe that we've got a mobile phone. Like it was a spin out. And it was the biggest brick ever. It was, it was as big as a paver. That was the one and only call I ever made on it. <laughs> Thanks for that. Good pressure. Yeah, um, why, why didn't you use it anymore after that? I broke down, didn't I? Because no one my age had them. And it was the, <laughs> literally the first mobile phone in the world. And so there could... was not another person I could possibly call unless it was a house phone. So you could only talk to uh, mum and I anyway? Pretty much, yeah. And I only called mum on that day, on the day you gave it to me, and then it was being in the drawer. I think it might still be in the drawer. Thanks a lot. You never rang me. <laughs> You're in the car, drop me home, you imbecile. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah okay. anyway, Wow. No more phones. You <laughs> yeah. know what, now Now I'm all like I'm having a battle with myself because it's really easy to send an emoji in place of something you say. Like it yep. says a bit more like, you know, Instead of ha-ha all the time or LOL, I've never been an LOL person. Mm. Um, but now you just put the, the laughy face. But yep. I don't know. Then I, I see messages I've sent before and I'm looking over and thinking, this looks like a big puss, pussy girl like sending a message with emojis, like all different emojis. So yeah. I've gone off them. I'm just sticking to text now. Okay. And uh, maybe the occasional emoji if it's not uh, a pansy thing. Looking back, seeing all love, like not love hearts, but more like smiley faces and shit. It's, it's weird. Mm. What have we become? Yeah, what I mean, what where have we where have we gone to? We're talking about emojis. We're talking about the grand final. Well, mate, Jeez. fucking give your kids the medication required at the age required, and I won't have ADHD when I get to thirty eight. Yeah, exactly. So again, bad parenting, really. Talk to your mother. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, the, the, the grand final didn't disappoint, did it, in regards to uh, there were some matchups there, like Will Chambers and Latrell Mitchell. What about that? That was massive. That was a massive rivalry, and oh, Latrell was just all over him, mate, all day, all day. It was, it was absorbing, wasn't it? When uh, Latrell took him over the uh, sideline, took Chambers over the sideline, and it sort of spilled out. And uh, yeah. out. Did you see Freddie Fittler there with a the microphone? <laughs> no, I didn't see him there, but um, it was, I was waiting to see the reaction, and it looked like it was bloody... Uh, Latrell that wanted to go on with it even more. He got him out, put him yep. into the wall. Chambers still turned around as if, oh, you're right, mate. You freaking got me, dickhead, or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. then threw he, the ball. and that He couldn't let it go then at that stage, but then he, yeah, he kept yeah. going. Yeah. But, uh, he, he's, um, mate, he's got that confidence, hasn't he? Bloody he up. has. And imagine, when he's, imagine when he's like 28 and he's just seasoned and a hard dude, like a big, strong, like mature, muscled and boned fuck you know, young athlete or still young enough athlete to do damage. Don't don't put the mocker on him. You could do a knee yeah. and we'll never see him again. No, he'll be right. He'll be right. He's he'll be sweet. Right. He's too big and strong, that unit. But what about the uh, Cronk and Smith view that's alive and well? Yeah, it looked like they had a couple of little exchanges there, didn't they? A little there bit was of bad one. blood that comes out. You can't hide it on the field in a big, important game. The emotion comes out, doesn't it? No. There was one time there, too, after um, Cronk kicked it downfield and they ended up on the ground together. and um, Smith... Did the did the old um, uh, false laugh and smile at him, and then Cronk sort of grabbed his neck, showed no emotion at all while grabbing his neck. Yeah, and it was like a big, big no emotion. Fuck you. Yeah. And, Do you reckon um, uh, uh, he uh, did they shake hands at the end of the game? Um, we would we would have seen it by now. The cameras would have been all over that. So obviously yeah. they didn't. They didn't. They didn't. No, I they reckon. Looked, there was a bit of a theory going around where I was watching it. We had about four or five different mates here. And the theory was that um, he went off a little bit earlier just to avoid having to have a big moment on in the media with, you know, they were well ahead. They'd won the game. Yeah, took yeah, him no. off and he just was like. No, I think you're making up stories in there. Well, let me just make it up because we got no juice and we're not going <laughs> to tell on dob on people if they've done something wrong, really. Are no, we? So the, let's make shit up. The juice is grand final, mate. That's what we. That's the ah, juice. Ah, right. Oh, sorry, oh, man. God. I'm sorry, priest. But uh, the, I, I, I'd say there would have been photographers that would have been looking for that and checking it out. But they they mustn't have come 
come close to each other after the game in any way, shape or form. I was but looking out it. for it. I didn't see it. No. Yeah, no, it didn't happen. But, Mate, um, the, the Roosters kicking game, geez, it was, it was just so simple. They, they'd be in their ha- in the Roosters' half, uh, in the uh, Storm's half, and they uh, Luke Curry kick it high. Yeah. And, and then they just organised their defensive line to go down in front of uh, Billy Slater, had no sort of room to move. Yeah. But it was just simple stuff, you know, rather than sort of kicking from from Roos's own half and making it a long one, then then Billy Slater would have all that room to move and then get you know hitch up with his, his wingers and stuff like that. But he that was just such a simple plan that worked really well. Wasn't it what they they honestly it was a masterclass and it was played at pace. Their first three play the balls just about of every set were that dominant. Yeah. Like there was no hope for Melbourne. They were just on the back foot the whole time. They and these them. massive centers and and uh, second rowers and and just big athletic young men, mate, just mm. throwing them like with the killer instinct, throwing themselves at these this Melbourne mob, and they just it looked like it looked like they were playing a reserve grade side at one stage. That's how good they were going. Mm, okay, um, probably not that exaggerated. Yeah, that was over anyway. the top. But did you hear uh, Luke Keary sent Russell Crowe a photo message sticking his finger up with a trophy? Stop it! Did he? No, but just yeah, roll, roll with it. Just roll okay. With it. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah. Rusty was filthy. Apparently, Rusty <laughs> sent him a video back of like his thumb sideways and he put it down as to say, basically, <laughs> I'm going to kill everyone you've ever met. The gladiator that's, thing. That's what it meant. Yeah. Okay. But um, I always had a dream that if I played South and there was like a couple of minutes to go and I scored the winning try, that mm. I'd do that. I'd go, go up to the box where the box is, put my thumb up and then just put it down. That'd be yeah. a very good uh, theatrics for a game, wouldn't it? Then you woke up and you had your hand on it. Yeah, well, it never happened. So yeah, yeah. You know. yeah. And then also I had this thing too at Manly. I thought, ah, uh, sorry, not at Manly. Manly. Uh, at, we were playing against Manly, and it was the Sydney Cricket Ground. It was a great, great game, and mm. I think we I think we just won. Uh, and I was thinking, if I scored the winning try, there was on the side like someone won a competition. They sat in a spa bath and watched us for the whole game, real close. Yeah. yeah. And I was going to run and jump in there and have a beer with them, like if I scored that try. <laughs> this is all the shit that goes on in my head. That training yeah, I'm right. supposed to be learning. And I was thinking all that. None of it ever happened, but fuck. While you were at training, how do you think of that time. sort of stuff while you are training? On the wing, you get a lot of downtime. You know? Yeah, okay. Well, that's When you're on, much... you're on. Don't get me wrong. It's very physical. A lot of jumping, a lot of sprinting, a lot of stop-start, a lot of you know running into people. But then every now and then, while they're working on a ruck play or something, you're just out in the wing, just listen, and your brain just wanders. Mine Can you... certainly does. Can you refrain from doing any exercise too while we're talking? Sorry. Yeah. Last last week, yeah, you had all this heavy breathing. <laughs> Happy. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. It mate. just doesn't sound good. We, you know, people don't really know what you're doing. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. All right. I won't exercise. Uh, um, quote unquote exercise. <laughs> all on the podcast ever again. Yeah. So, um, Cameron Munster, what do you think of his performance? I mean. Yeah, I don't know. He's fuck. He's he's amazing. Like he's he's a great player. He's an amazing he, player. I've he been watching. I've been watching. They know one had a great day. Billy no, they didn't. Did. But he, but he, he, he personified what what happens to the storm and individually. He's a great player, and but he ha- he has some uncontrollable shit in his game when things yeah, aren't just, going his a, way. Shit in him, definitely. Yeah, he has. I've been watching him throughout the year. And, um, it's been happening right through the season. He got Sinbin twice and lost it completely by. Um, Kicking out after making a tackle. Yeah, that was dog shit. I wish someone smacked him in the chops for that. But he's all right. Like he'll he'll learn the hard way a few yeah, yeah, times, yeah. and then hopefully it's a learning, mold learning into curve. a uh, respectful kind of. He he kind of has this air, air of arrogance about him, doesn't he? But I'm sure, like if yeah, in person it's different because I've thought that about yeah, a lot of, of people, and then you when, meet him, and you're like, oh, oh yeah, no, I was so no. wrong. I'm never judging a book by its cover again. And then straight away, I'll judge a book again straight by its cover. <laughs> but you do think a little bit harder the next time, don't you? Well, we can't we, we can't judge them or what they how they how they come across on the football field. They they're all good. They're all good people. Perfect good. example, Chris Walker. Yes. Who does? I used to see his head before I knew him on the field and go, look at him, look, <laughs> look at this at him. specimen, look. just full of it, full of himself. And <laughs> <laughs> mate, as soon as five minutes after knowing him. You understand what okay, he is one of the funniest blokes ever. Yeah, and he doesn't even mean it. Like it's funny when he's not even trying to be. Like he's just hilarious. he's a good fella, and he's the yeah. best bloke. Like he's always gives you know keeps in touch with all his old footy mates, and I get a random call from him every now and then. We have a laugh for about ten minutes, and um, yeah, he's uh, he, he's a case in point. 
you think yep. someone's a you know loud mouth or arrogant, and you meet them and you bloody get a shock. I don't know what Munster's like. I haven't met him, but he's just got one of those heads on him, hasn't he? Yeah, well, he's, he's got that. The, yeah, the attitude, and, and it really came out when the things aren't going his way and Storm's way. Uh, there's a couple of um, characters there that um, can't seem to handle it. Well, but um, that's the way yeah. the game goes. Hmm. And um, what about Ferguson playing 30 minutes with a broken fibula? I mean, I, I yeah. that hurts yeah. me even just saying it. Two seasons out, wouldn't we? Broken fibula, that hurts. He'll stretch that out. He'll get out of most of pre-season at Para, so he'll be happy with that. <laughs> he'll be doing a lot of swimming, though. Maybe he's, I think he's a shit swimmer, apparently. Yeah. Where's your fibula? That's in your, t- in your feet, isn't it? Um, foot. No, a fibula is like that runs up. You you got your tibula, oh. and your fibula, the front and back of your shin. The tibula on the fibula. Tibula the fibula. Tibula the fibula. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the tibula the fibula. <laughs> what um? What's going hey. on today, mate? Oh, nothing. About mate. footy. Oh, mate. Strap it up, man. Yeah, I got a couple of more things. Here, eh? <laughs> no, I got a couple more things. On. Trent uh, Robinson. Trent Robinson gave his grand final ring to uh, omitted prop. Lindsay Collins, what about that? That was a nice little... That's a very nice gesture. Craig Fitzgibbon, thing. couldn't be happier for him. Great bloke. He's going to yeah. end up a head coach somewhere one day. Um, yeah, it'll be there. Won't be oh, you'd else. think so. He could definitely take over from Trent, but Trent seems, he's, Trent's younger than Fitzy. Is he? Yeah. Trent's like only a couple of years older than me. Can you believe it? Actually, so is Fitzy. They're about the same age. I think Fitzy's slightly older than him. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's got an old head, um, Robert Trent Robinson. He has, and he's worn out a couple of bodies there. Yeah, and he's just, um, yeah, always had that kind of. He was a lot. He's still a bit knockabout, I think, but you know, obviously a lot more serious now as being a head coach of an NRL side. It's a very high pressure job. It is at stake. Um, but yeah, he used to knock about it. I went to St Greg's and he was there, and he played in the free teams. I used to always see him have a chat, and he's always okay. just been a nice, friendly bloke. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, it's a nice little uh, story for the to go see. What, what do you think of the a little uh, bit of a feel good story? What do you think of the warm in your heart, doesn't it? Oh, I'm trying to say something. You keep. Yeah, we'll spit it out. Fucking hell. What did you think of the pre game build up? Gang of Youths. No, that wasn't Gang of Youths. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. <laughs> yes, it was. Was it? Hang yeah. On a minute. Hang on a minute. You check it out. Because yeah, my mate's texting me saying this mob thinks they're the Gang of Youth or something. It, it was the Gang of Youth. Yeah, hang on. I'm just going to check over there. Ah, oh, no, no. He said Gaslight. Okay, there's a band called Gaslight Anthem, and yep. he's like this guy's a muse, and he goes, they have completely ripped off all their song, like their music. Gang, like, gang of Youths have. I don't know. I was just started some shit that I can't back up again. Mm. Anyway, Gang of Youths. Oh, great, weren't they? Now they had that. They had that. Um, <laughs> they had that big uh, uh, kind of anthemic rock kind of vibe, didn't they? Like sounded the U2. A bit, yeah, U2-ish. The, it sounded very U2-ish. <laughs> yeah, a bit U2-ish in that Coldplay kind of stadium rock vibe. But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the um, well, there's there's a bit of a mix, a bit of, um, a, bit of a mix of um, people. Like the older era, older era didn't like it. I actually got a message from Terry Lubita, um as it was happening. He said, oh, what's happening? The NRL just can't get it right with this. Mm. And I'd love to be in charge of their marketing, just like the ideas person. It just spit yes. all heaps of ideas, write them up on a whiteboard, just narrow them down and just fucking run with it and go hard for it. Anyway. Yeah. But the young, just looking at a lot of tweets and the young, younger era thought the NRL got it right. They thought, you know, I mean, obviously the, the, the younger era knows the band and I, and I heard of them before, but I hadn't heard any of their music. But yeah, um, I thought it sounded okay. Yeah. And, it's um, better so, like, than some of the other shit they've had, like, you know. You're being optimistic about it. like it's a lot better than some of the stuff they've had in the past. Already. Yeah, it's like typical. You can't please everyone. You can only please. I think like whoever's people. in charge, they're not a lot of time. They're not with it, are they? They're not with like the times or something, or 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 they're missing. They're missing the brand a bit. Or they're they're using yeah. the wrong kind of yeah but, marketing or something. Yeah, no, I think they got. It. I think they got it pretty right. I've been mean, current current stuff. Uh, Gang of user. Uh, yeah, but no one knew that music. Like, how good would a big sing along be? Like, say, for instance, obviously, like John Farnham. You know, uh, you're the no, voice. I'm thinking more to like, it. Uh, you know, they did Barnsey, didn't they? Once that's good. That's, yeah, yeah. That's Everyone good. knows But Barnsey. you can't do him every year. But like, what else? You could do. You did heaps of stuff. You did heaps of different stuff. Yeah, there's well anthem type. Living End. Have they used the Living End? They're one of the best Aussie rock bands live I've ever seen in my life. And bands. Full stop. I've never been a huge fan of the music, but. I saw them live a couple of times. 
Actually, they were at the Triple M No BS Luncheon the second time, and they just played with acoustic um, instrument, uh, uh, kick drum, and it yep. was they had nothing, and they just rocked me in, and they fucking sounded spot on. Like that voice he's got in that guitar playing, he's so precise, and everything's so tight and punchy. And they've always got a good live sound. Like when I saw them live, and they're all plugged in, like with the electric stuff, they uh they sounded huge and punchy and tight, and yeah, it was really good. It was, it was just one of the better gigs I've ever seen, actually. A few times, but both times I've seen them, I left going, "Fuck, it makes it makes you like them when they're so good live." Living End were on there a couple of years back. Okay, so you could have maybe shut me up before I went. No, into have that. you taken your medication today? You sound very you're on, oh, fuck, on fire. I'm hyped, eh? I'm really hyped. I had a coffee. I had a black coffee, and I haven't had coffee. That's what it is. Fuck, I'm a dickhead. <laughs> I haven't had a coffee for 48 years because of migraines, and I had one like about half an hour before yeah. I spoke to you, and that explains everything. Yeah, you're, you're going off because I feel like my brain is racing. I can't, I can't stop you. You're just on fire. Oh, that's isn't that scary that my brain is just that scattered like that? It is a little bit. Does that worry you? It is. Oh, thanks for your support. No worries. You sound like your mother. Oh. <laughs> <Got that. laughs> no, you do. You're, you're, what does she sound like, by the way? Good old Trish. Good old Trish. Living it up at Foster. Yeah, getting married November 4th. Yeah, how good's that? Uh, November 10th, actually. That's awesome. Yeah. You going or is are they just having a yeah, nice fight? Oh, yeah, good. Cool. Yeah, I'll just go. It's just on, it's where pop. They scattered Pop's ashes up on the headland oh, at Foster. Oh, nice. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so they're just doing a little, like, a gathering there. It's like... Beautiful. Not a big day. Thanks for the invite. Thanks for the invite, Trish. Oh, yeah. You want to go? Thanks a lot. You can come. I think I've got a plus one. Plus one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and, and some other sort of negative stuff. Inglis got caught drink driving mid-range and speeding after being named captain of the Kangaroos. Has that been confirmed? Yes, has been confirmed. Are you sure about that? <laughs> yeah. He got done drink driving, eh? Yeah, only a very low mid range. Yeah, what? what he, so, what he, was this the next morning? Um, he was coming back from some um, football tournament or something. Some oh, the curry knock curry knock thing, thing yeah. And he's yeah. had a couple of drinks, and he was just just over. So, leave him alone. He'll be right. Yeah, you reckon? Just leave him yeah, leave him alone. Yeah, it's uh, when you well, you know, the media they have links to who gets. Well, you can see on. Um, Police reports every day. There's a site apparently you can go on and they type in, or they just keep a lookout at any incidents reported. Yep. And as soon as they see Greg Inglis, they follow it up, and find out it is, and it's news. So even if he was just like a little crumb over, it would be news regardless. Yeah, but uh, who, how do how do they get that information? I mean, if, if I get if you get pulled over by yeah, police, do the police? It's public knowledge. It's, it becomes public knowledge if you do the wrong thing. Apparently, it's now becomes. Yeah, well, it's got to start somewhere. So the police would have said would have rang. Someone from from the, uh, uh, rang a journal or rang the media somewhere. Why would they have to yeah. even bother doing that? Why don't just leave it alone? No, no, the police don't. Re- the the media can see the. See oh, the okay. The police re- the list of names that have been they've been reports on. They're good, aren't they? Yeah, mm. that's how I understand how it works. Unless I'm wrong, someone tell me. But that's I'm pretty sure it's something like that. That where they have access to the information where you can see who's. Been booked overnight. Like mm. I don't know what website it is or or how how it is that they have access to it, but I think it's public knowledge. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Slippery suckers, aren't they? Aren't they? What about the? Uh... Yeah. So it's, yeah, I always used to think, oh, geez, there's, there's a bloody loud mouth, mouth cop in every bloody yeah, station. You know, think. I used to always yeah. think, and then I was like, then I found out, no, it's, they have access. To okay. Thing. Okay. Well, I hope now. Anyway, he's done the wrong thing, so oh, don't. Can I get a word in edgewise? Jesus. <laughs> No more, co- no right. more coffee for you before, no, I, before sorry, a podcast. Sorry, sorry. I'm going to shut up for the rest of it. Oh, can, okay, you ready? Can I? I'm going to say something yeah. right now. I'll probably interrupt, but go. Um, I've even fucking forgotten what I'm going to talk about. Uh, oh, what? Oh, well, here's your big moment, you fucking <laughs> freckle. I can't think of. Here's your big moment. And you just go mute. Uh, oh, the, uh, the, <laughs> You're the current kangaroo squad has been. Been announced. Is it's a completely different without Cooper Cronk. You got no Cameron Smith. You got no Billy Slater. And all the norm, all yeah, the normal shit, ones over the last different. fifteen years. Yeah, it's uh, it's a big, uh, big opportunity for young guys, Austra- young Australians, and also a big opportunity for some of the other teams to maybe establish, you know, yep. uh, their authority on this new era. Yes. How did that came out it's, beautifully? Didn't and we got some um, the uh, 
the New Zealand squad's sort of young too. We've got a, a, some Roosters players in there that played really well in grand final day, the, the centre, Manu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how all that goes. Very they might uh, level it all up for the uh, inter- yeah, international scene. never know. Or we might just unleash a whole new arsenal of Aussie freaks. Yeah, there's always someone ready to take someone's spot. Isn't there what, Look, mate? In 10 years' what? time, they'll be saying... Oh, uh, this halfback's the best player in the world, best player ever. And they, yep. hang on a sec, what about Cooper Cron? What about JT? What about Tom Rodonigus? Oh, JT, you know him, do you? Yeah, JT was there, mate. I uh, actually. Sh- oh, you and him, Bessie's I now shook, hands with, I shook Instagram. hands with him and um, uh, Ferner. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, what's his first name? Kim- Don Ferner. Not Don. Son. Oh, Fernsey. Um- Fernsey. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget. Yeah. I just call him. He's friends. a great bloke. He always comes. He's a legend. Hey, he's, he's always the best. Good player. fellow. Yeah. And uh, him and Jay too were just finishing. He's a good boxer. Yeah. He, he fights pretty well. He can hold him up. Apparently. Yeah. Uh, you should fight him. Yeah. Terrific. Can I get a word in edgewise? Yeah. Um, him and Jay too were um in the at the urinal when I walked in and they just finished and they went to shake hands. I said, "Oh, hang on. We'll just wash our wash our hands." <laughs> <laughs> that the wash before the shake, did they? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that's good hygiene from them too. Yeah, so we had a bit... I normally wouldn't care. I thought, oh, someone's nuts on your head. It's all right. We... <laughs> Just wash it off afterwards. Anyway, we had a bit of a moment, moment in the toilet. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah right. Nice. Um, oh, so, hang on. They had to wash their hands before they shook yours, or how did it work? Well, they did. I, I went. I put my hand out, but they, and I said, oh, don't worry about it. They said they... Wash their hands and they, they put their hands. <laughs> you wanted their ball. You wanted their <laughs> their dick skin on your hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should. Yeah. You should have two cups. Oh, it's of coffee. JT's. I'd never wash it again. <laughs> That's it. Should have got your hand signed after it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. But yeah. No. Good time. Eh? Yeah. That's no, good. That's good. So what's uh, what else? Oh, not no. That's there's not much more to talk about. The, the footy's over, which is a pretty sad thing. We can watch cricket now, which would be great. Oh, yeah. That'll happen. Mm. Um, I'm not watching any sport. Oh, you at Oi. Oh, oh, okay. All right. I've got to speak Have to another you, coffee. hopefully Laura from the UFC this week. Yeah. Can you send this app via another way instead of... No, they've got to download the app. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, I'll just do that. I'll, um, because I want to speak to her about McGregor versus... Khabib. When's that on? She's got all the inside info. On Sunday in Australia, it's the 6th of October over there, but it be, means it's the 17th. So day in front. That'll be interesting. Who do you think is going to win that? Oh, shit. I don't know. I don't no, know. Come on. Like, just answer the question. It would say, it would say, you would say, could, I don't know. It's too hard to pick. pick a bib, I'm going to say. Okay. Just because he's a strong uh, wrestler, and I think he's not dumb enough to just walk in and let Connor whack his chin to test it out. I think he knows that Connor's a much better striker, and he's not going to try and beat Connor in his own game. He's going to try and make it ugly and messy as possible because that's when Connor has historically struggled, when it's gotten into the later rounds and it's on the ground and it's dirty and grimy yeah, and there's, yeah. you know, a bit of street brawling going on. And yeah. like when, when he fought Diaz in the later rounds and the tide turned a little bit and all his shots hadn't knocked him out yet, he, um, he started to really suck in the big ones. And this is when Diaz just kept walking forward like a zombie from one of those video games. <laughs> he keeps shooting and they just keep walking yeah, at you. Yeah. He was like that, and Connor was just buckled. All his power's gone. He's a power athlete, Connor. So he has to win, I reckon, either conserve his energy and stay away from Khabib, which is impossible because Khabib's so pressuring. He pressures everyone yeah. to make moves, you know. So if he can't do that, if he doesn't do that, then he has to fucking snap snap Khabib before the, the fight goes on too long because then he's going to be ratchet. Yeah. You know, he's a power athlete, so he'll have a – Big burst, and then he'll be more buggered than, say, someone who's got less of a burst but can go over a longer period of time. Yeah. And that's – Khabib goes all day, all day. But you look at their body types. Khabib's got a massive, thick core. Mm. Connor's got a really skinny core, right? Light, light around the waist and hips and the, and the glutes and that. Uh, that's where Khabib's thick. But then you look at their arms. Connor's arms and shoulders and his back, they're all so wide and, and and hard, big, bulbous muscle. Like, he's got a lot of reach. Uh, he's got reach, too. And he just looks like a proper boxer, like a gypsy boxer, you know what I mean? Yep, yep. He's got that attacking, striking frame. 
Um, so it looks like up top, when you don't see the whole lot of them, it looks like Connor's kind of musclier and more of an athlete. Right, okay. And he probably is in some regards, but his person are just a tenacious terrier. Like, yeah. Strong. And everyone who wrestles Khabib, he wrestles with heavyweights. They all say they all say how strong he is, and it's so surprising when they lock with him and they feel his strength of him trying to take him to the ground for a little smaller guy. So I don't think Connor's got that strength. Definitely could knock him out, but I don't think he's going to. And I think once it goes to ground, which I think is inevitable with Khabib, I think Connor's in for a fucking yucky okay, night. Okay, well, look forward to the uh, the talk wrong. you have with your, your lady friend over there. Yep, no worries. So I'll try and do that. Yeah, that will be good. So what are you doing for the rest of the day? Um, I just clean my whole house. Stop it. Like, you know what? Uh, you know what the worst shit is? Is dust. Yeah, it, it builds up. Clean. Everything's been washed. All the linens washed. I washed all the pillow cases. Yep. Um, everything. I de dusted. Everything's smick. Look at but look. Dust is just. Look at you being domestic. You'd make a good husband to somebody. <laughs> hey, I'm not counting it out at this stage. Yeah, right. It'd be easier. What's his name? A lot easier. What's his name? Daryl. Daryl's <laughs> um, a good name for a gay man about 45, isn't Why it? Why is that? I don't know. I just feel like there's not many Daryl. Like, you know, when's the last time you've seen a baby named Daryl? I've got a couple of mates called Daryl. Yeah, but a baby. When's the la- You don't see kids being named Daryl. No, it's a bit, bit of an old school name, yeah. Yeah, or Malcolm. You don't see any baby Malcolms. <laughs> True. What else? Well, you don't see, or well, you don't hear, or... Do you reckon it's weird when a baby's name's Greg? Yeah, they're all old school names. They don't sort of fit. These days, it's, uh, it's, it's more... Um... Yeah. I hated my name <laughs> until I realised it originates from Vikings. Yeah, Eric. 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 Mm. Eric. Blood, there, was a, there was a Viking called uh, named Bloodaxe, Eric Bloodaxe. Yep. And then my friends would call me Bloodaxe for a while. I thought I was that cool. It's a pretty tough name, isn't it? There was a lot that went into your name, you know. I there was a lot of thinking and a lot of thought that went behind oh, yeah. it. I, right at the end there, when I thought, oh, I can't pick one, just call him after me. <laughs> Thanks for taking your time, Morris. <laughs> Fuck. Really. Anyway, all right. Well, the foot right. footy's over, mate. That's it. So we, uh, yeah, are we going to continue? We'll just talk about other shit. All then. right, we'll continue talking other shit next week. We're going to talk about some health stuff. Because it's come up the summer, and everyone keeps asking me on the uh, on social media to on the podcast to talk about some healthy fat loss tips and things like okay. that. So, think of some questions that the average person might. Well, if you if you're listening to this, write to me and ask the questions, and we will answer them yeah. to the best of our ability. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. No worries. Thanks for joining us. And re- next time we should take two cups of coffee because that that'll be a show and a half. Oh, next time I'll do it an hour before if I'm going to do Christ. it. I'll just wait till after. Because bloody hell. All right. Sorry. Sorry, man. You've got to take some Panadol. Relax. Oh, t- stop t- making me have more drugs. <laughs> making you. All right. All right. I'll speak. Okay. You. See ya. <laughs>